Hi, welcome to the Swift UI animation tutorial. In this video, we will look at two ways to build this thumbs up button animation using Dispatch Queue and the new face animator in Swift UI. So let's begin. So, why will you use two ways to build the same animation? For example, if your app does not support iOS 17, you can use Dispatch Queue to build the animation. Also, the new face animator in iOS 17 makes built-in animations like this really simple. So let's look at how to approach each one of them. First, let's assume that our app does not support iOS 17. So let's build the animation. So let's build this animation using this patch queue. We will first define this state, scale, rotate, and set the initial state to false. Over here, I have an edge stack containing two buttons. If I tap any one of them, you can see they don't have any interactivity. To make each of the buttons interactive, we need to add a button action. For the first one, we want to use with animation and the old interpolating spring in Swift UI. We can use the new spring, but here we are just assuming our app does not support iOS 17. For the animation parameter, we want to use an interpolating spring consisting of stiffness and damping. So we set the stiffness to 170 and the damping to 10. The stiffness is the tension in the spring, whilst the damping is how bouncy the spring is. If you have a smaller value for damping, you get a high bounciness. Let's add a closure here. Now we can bring the state we defined here and toggle it. So we have our spring animation, but still nothing happens. We need to attach the properties we want to animate. What we should do is to attach it to the button label. The animation consists of scale and rotation. So let's use two modifiers, rotation effect and scale effect. First, we will set the angle of rotation to zero. We'll come back to that later. Then we add the scale effect. I will copy the state variable and use tenary operation to create the animation. Using tenary operation, we have two values. So, for the angle of rotation, I will paste the state here and bring a question mark. The value that comes after the question mark is the true value. So for the true value, we will set the angle of rotation to, for example, minus 45 degrees. And the false value will return to the initial state, which is zero. Let's do the same thing here. For the true value, we scale the button up to, for example, 1.5 and the false value will have the original size, which is 1. Now, if I tap it, you can see the button rotates, but the rotation takes effect from the center of the button. That is not what we want. In Swift UI, we can use the anchor property to define where we want the rotation or the scale to take effect from. So let's add another parameter here, that is anchor. That is the center of gravity of the object. So we can move it to the top, bottom, left, or right. Let's move it to the bottom left. That is the same as bottom leading. So if I tap again, you can see the rotation takes effect from the bottom. But this is not the kind of animation we want. If we tap it, we want it to rotate upward and then return to the original state. Since we are toggling between the true and false state, we cannot achieve that. But using dispatch queue, we can set the animation to return to the original state after some few seconds. So below the with animation closure, let's add dispatch queue. So when we tap the button, we scale and rotate it. Then using dispatch queue, we are saying after 0 0.45 seconds, we want the animation to return to the original state by resetting the scale and rotation animation to false so that it returns to the original state using the same interpolating spring animation. So if I tap again, you can see it returns to the original state. So this is the kind of animation we want. And for this animation, if you have an app that does not support iOS 17, this is the best way to create this animation. Let's look at using face animator for the second button. Using face animator, we need to define some steps for the animation to cycle through. So let's define this property here. That is the thumbs count and set it to zero. 
We can add face animation in two ways, using the face animation view or using the face animator modifier. Let's use face animator modifier. So in the parentheses, we need to define some set of faces. We have only two faces, true and false. So let's use an array for that. Then I will bring a closure here. First, we need to state what we want to animate. That is the thumbs up icon. So we can simply say we want to animate an icon. Then how do we want to animate this icon? We can say scale and rotate. Over here we have scale rotate. So let's put scale and rotate for this. Then we add the content we want to animate. That is our icon. So first we will add the rotation effect. Then using the same ternary conditional operation along with our animation variable here, we can create the rotation animation. So let's paste it here and bring a question mark. For the true value, we want to use the same animation as this one. So let me copy everything and paste here. When you add face animation to a view, it makes the animation repeat forever. So you can see the thumbs up icon on the right is just repeating the animation forever. Let's add the scale effect also. The scale effect animation is the same as this one. So I'll copy it and paste it here. Then we change the variable to this one. So now we have the button both rotating and scaling. But as you have noticed, it is also scaling from the center because the center of gravity of the view is positioned at the center. We can move it from the center of the button to the bottom left as we did over here. So let's copy the anchor property and bring it over here. You can now see we have the rotation and scale animations taking place at the bottom left. For the first animation, we need to tap to trigger the animation. And since we are using face animator, the animation triggers automatically. But the good thing about face animator is we can also pass a trigger as a parameter over here. So what is the trigger? Initially, we define this times count. So let's copy that. That will be the trigger. We now don't have the repeating animation anymore. If I tap it, nothing happens. This is because for the animation to take place, we need to increase the count. We have the count here as zero. So for the animation to happen, we need to increase it by a value. That will be our button action. So let's copy the times count and use it as the button action. So I'll bring the compound assignment operator. So anytime we tap the button, we increase the value by one. Now we can tap and show the animation. You can see the animations are different here. For the face animator, we have the spring animation, but that is different from the icon on the left. When you use face animator, you can customize the animation you built using the animation closure. So here, let's add animation. Let's first use the old spring we defined here. After adding the animation closure, we need to add the animation variable. We have scale and rotate. So let's copy that one and paste it here. For the animation, we can use the same old spring we defined here. So let's copy that and paste it here. So by tapping anyone, we get the same animation. Since we are using face animator for this animation, we are not restricted to use the old spring. So let's go along with the new way of defining a spring. We can put a comment here. We want to use a bouncy spring, having duration and extra bounce. So we can just say dot bouncy. By tapping the button, you can see we have some bounciness, but that is not the same as this one. So let's add two parameters here. The first one is duration. That is time interval. We are going to set it to 0 0.5. Then we have another parameter, extra bounce. Let's set it to 0 0.4. Then we tap again. You can see our animations are quite similar. So by experimenting with different kinds of spring animation parameters, 
what I notice is that dot mousey is the same as having an old spring animation with a stiffness of 170, damping of 25. So by changing these values to 25, you can see we have less bouncy animation. I will press Command Z to undo the change. And then here, bring the parameters again. So by tweaking these parameters, we can create different kinds of spring feel. So this is all I have in this animation. We used an old spring animation along with dispatch queue to create this stamp up animation. So this is useful if your app does not support iOS 17. And for iOS 17, we use the face animator along with this bouncy spring. Thanks for watching this video.